going. So this is such a sweet little spot that we're walking through right now. Let's see, we're in the, are we in the 10 mile range still? No, we are out of the 10 mile range. We're moving towards, what's Co in? Kokomo Pass. Kokomo Pass. <laughs> and We're on the other side of Copper Mountain. Yeah, on the Colorado Trail, we're on the section that's just past Copper Mountain going southbound. And this trail, I'm just like, this morning is just so beautiful. We are passing a whole field of food and medicine and fiber and beauty. And right here, just in this one spot, we have the wild valerian and we have um, this type of biscuit root that we've been seeing like almost the whole trail. I'm pretty sure it's the same one or at least there might be like two different ones we've been seeing like consistently the whole time. And we also have tons of wild flax and yarrow. All the blue flowers or all the wild flax. So maybe I could like pick one. So this is the wild flax right here. Just so cool to see western blue flax western blue flax flax <clears throat> because there's so many ones cultivated now for fiber and for food and there's like <clears throat> a whole story about wild flax in um europe and all around the world here in on turtle island but it's like one of the main main plants growing and then we have mariposa lilies yes and also mariposa lilies which there's a lot more of them right up there but we've been passing yeah, huge stands of them. It's, there's some real densities on these slopes. So over here, towards the east, that's a um, west-facing slope. And you can see ecologically what's happening. It's predominantly spruce and some lodgepole. And then there's this meadow. And then on this east-facing slope, <clears throat> It's a lot more open and sunny right now in the morning. Yeah. And there's uh, this biscuit root that has been with us the whole time, and it's a delicious bread root. Let me pick an umbel to get up close. And then Mariposa lilies just covering these east facing, basically, since our camp down the way a bit, all the way to here. And as we keep going, this whole east facing slope is just. A big foodscape with medicine and fiber and and uh, food. I wanted to show up close, or if that's possible, because <clears throat> um, it's kind of nice to be able to see what they look like. But this is the biscuit root, which I guess is is a pseudosomopterus. It's a somopterus now. But now yeah. it's a somopterus. Yeah. Um, and I guess different names for it are spring parsley. No, it's the mountain parsley. Mountain parsley. Yeah. The part, the thing that botanists calling a lot of different things parsley. But um, if you if you're in a plant book, most of the biscuit roots and Lomatia mansimopteris are all called like different kinds of parsley spring something. parsleys. Yeah. But the interesting thing about this biscuit root is, whereas most <clears throat> biscuit roots I've met are. Uh, the first to flower in the spring and one of the first to wither away. This one has been with us the whole time throughout the summer in the mountains. And you can eat the greens and the root and the flower. The root is good. Mm, so good. I miss vegetables. We've been foraging as much as we can out here, like within reason, you know. But, oh, so good. And this is Valerian. Uh, the, uh, it's like a wild western valerian, I think. On some places you can smell that like dirty foot smell that valerian root has in the air when this you walk through. This meadow kind of smells a little mm -hmm. like dirty feet because of the valerian. We've been smelling, we've been smelling a lot of lupine yeah. and valerian and um, <clears throat> Valerian's like in its own family. It's not related to the carrots, as far as I yeah. know, unless they've changed it. But it has some really interesting, like the leaves are a really distinguishing characteristic here. These opposite leaves, I guess they're pinnately compound. I think that's, but just once compound. And I've grown valerian before and seen it wild in other places, so I just recognize it right away. <clears throat> and the way that the flower head is not as well i got rid of my umbel because i ate it but it's flower structure it's different than the carrot family it's not as distinctly 
humbled um, in that kind of way that is a common characteristic in the carrot family. So we have those two things and then we have a lot of yarrow, which we've also been seeing pretty consistently everywhere. Mm. <clears throat> There's amazing. been all the medicine we pretty much need for like wounds or if we get sick too. There's a lot of OSHA and a lot of el uh, red elderberry growing, you know. So if one of us did get really sick, you know, we have like all this medicine that grows here with us. And, um, and right here we're also seeing uh, the, the both the woody bush cinquefoil and an herbaceous cinquefoil. Yeah, that yellow so, bush right there with the yellow flowers. And the sinka foil is cool because it's an indication of the bushy one, especially the bushy one is like an indication of water, you know. And but it's also um, interesting because at the same time it's an indication of water, but not too much water. And I've been using these bushy sinka foils as nursery plant bushes to plant yampa and um, camas and other things into because like on the edge of this where right when it all turns to willow on the edge of all that willow is this bushy sinka foil so you can kind of read the land and see like where it's soaking wet moderately wet semi moderately wet and then it gets drier as you go up into the hillside so we can kind of plant like the wet loving stuff in the stream area and then like the semi wet loving stuff that likes the drier stuff parts of the year on the edge of that and then follow that up as we plant and then up there we can plant the drier stuff like biscuit roots and then yampa and stuff down in here so you can see this is the leaf of the herbaceous cinquefoil it has that palmate like leaf with serrated margins like the rose family likes uh and this one has serrated margins too but they're very tiny and you would have to use a loop to see them but um, it kind of looks like a pot leaf, you know, like that's a, uh, characteristic of like palmate kind of hand leaves, but we're seeing a lot of that <clears throat> everywhere. I feel like we've gone <laughs> out of the herbaceous single foil and occasionally we'll see huge stands of the bushy one and there's a biker coming. So, uh, we'll end it at that and, um, 